This is Michael Woodward, and this is episode 99 of the Jumble Think Podcast. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Jumble Think Podcast, a podcast focused on telling the stories of dreamers, makers, innovators, and influencers. Along the way, we'll give you some tips and ideas of how you can chase your own big idea and dream and create the world you want to live in. Our guest on today's episode is Allison Cardi. More about Allison in a moment. This Wednesday is episode 100, and our guest is Lee Carraher. Lee is a CEO, author, speaker, and an expert on creating thriving businesses. She's the author of two books, The Boomerang Principle, Inspire Lifetime Loyalty from Your Employees, and her second book is called Millennials and Management, The Essential Guide to Making It Work at Work. She has spent 20 years of building positive, high-performing work teams, and she really is an expert in the world of communication. Lee is the founder and CEO of Double Forte, a 15-year-old digital marketing and PR firm. Make sure to come back this Wednesday for our very special episode 100 of the Jumble Think Podcast. I love when we can give you an update on a past guest. Earlier this year, on episode 43, part one and two, we had Matthew Schutte from the Metacurrency Project on the podcast. He shared about their new Holo community, and they recently launched a really cool campaign on Indiegogo. You may be asking, what is the Holo Project? Holo is a community committed to growing a truly peer-to-peer internet. Holo helps accomplish this by allowing anyone to access distributed applications simply by typing in a URL into the web browser. They believe that when everyone can explore the distributed internet, the internet will shift and change the world in powerful ways by empowering individuals, fostering trust, and helping build thriving communities. So how can you learn more? Swing on over to holo, H-O-L-O, dot host. That's holo dot host to learn more about their community, what they're creating, and how they're changing the face of the internet. Now let's jump into today's episode with Allison Cardi. Hey there, welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. I am so excited that you've joined us today for our amazing guest. The Jumble Think Podcast is a podcast all about dreamers, makers, innovators, and influencers. I'm so glad that you've joined today's episode. It's going to be a lot of fun. But first, I wanted to let you know, today's show is brought to you by FreshBooks.com. Get a free 30-day trial at www.gofreshbooks.com slash jumblethink. That's www.gofreshbooks.com slash jumblethink. Our guest on today's episode is Allison Carty. Allison is a career truth teller. She helps others live a life that feels like their own. She served nearly 200 professionals as they found a career fit through her clarity process. She's an author of a book called Career Grease, How to Get Unstuck and Pivot Your Career. She's been featured on Fast Company, Forbes, The Washington Post, and The Muse. She's been a speaker featured at events at Harvard, MIT, Georgetown, and the University of Maryland. She leads a team of six career coaches and runs a six-figure business. Let's jump into today's episode with our guest, Allison Carty. Allison, I'm super excited to have you on the podcast today. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you, Michael. I'm really glad to be here. I love your title of what you do. You call it the career truth teller. And we're going to get into what that means and what you do, but I want to back up uh, a couple years and kind of really dive into how you found what you're passionate about and how you found your strengths and how you apply them to doing what you do. So can you tell us a little bit about that journey of your own discovery into your own passion around helping others? Sure. And I'm I'm probably going to answer this question a little bit differently than you might expect. Yeah. I'm going to rewind quite a bit to actually when I was a teenager. Okay. And I had the really fortunate blessing of growing up in a loving home with supportive parents who cared about me a whole lot. I don't take that for granted. I think it was such a gift. But one of the byproducts of my parents caring and loving for me so much was that they were very protective of me. And in a way, I was raised to be scared. So I really lived in a very small world. And I 
found that one of the ways to stay safe and kind of follow the directives that my parents had offered to me was to stay really, really small. And one of the things that I did, even though I'm six feet tall, <laughs> is I, <laughs> I um, got very, very quiet. Okay. Um, I didn't really engage a whole lot with the world. I pretty much lived in my head and just went through the motions of life. And what happened is over time, I went to college and I kind of replicated the same world and way of living that I had experienced in my parents' home, where I would basically go three places on the college campus. I would go wow. to the dorm, or four, I guess, the dorm, my classes, the swimming pool, because I was a swimmer, and uh, the cafeteria. <laughs> and that okay. was really the extent of the world that I had known back home, where I would go to school, I would go to swim practice, I would come home. I just did the same thing. And I was really, really small, really, really scared as well to go beyond what I had kind of set up for myself. And um, I remember really vividly for many months at school something felt off. I, I wasn't happy. I wasn't excited about life. And I was reading a lot of quotations, like a lot of quotations <laughs> about courage and uh, expanding your life. And I was reading them and I was kind of like intellectually, okay, I get this. And then one day I made the decision to do the scariest thing that I could think of at the time, okay. which was, I was, I went to the university of Maryland I'm in the DC area. I decided to take Metro public transportation into the city, into DC to the Smithsonian, wow. which is like the national <laughs> museum. Yeah, yeah. And that was, that was like the scariest thing that I could think of to do. It was totally outside of my comfort zone. I hadn't even gone like across campus by myself. So wow. to, to take this trip and to decide to go was really a pivotal moment for me. I, I packed up a backpack with an apple and some water. I threw on my hoodie, you know, like a, a good college student. I walked to Metro, I hopped on the train. And I remember sitting there just shaking and trembling and um, kind of was pushed up against the wall of the car. And I was really, really frightened. I was in kind of physical fear state, wow. worried that something bad was going to happen to me. I didn't know what it was. It's kind of like in Harry Potter, how there are Dementors, like yeah, these yeah. big black creatures. <laughs> I was like, the Dementors are going to come and get me. I don't know what was going to happen. Um, and I was, I was, like I said, I was literally shaking and really worried that something bad was going to happen. So I, I took the train ride. I got off at my stop. I took the escalators up to the street level, to the National Mall. I walked a little ways and I found a park bench. And okay. it was kind of a, a cloudy gray, I think it was in the fall, like November day. Yeah. Wasn't that pretty out, but I, I went and I sat at the bench and I just sat there and looked around. And what I saw were, <laughs> you know, tourists yeah. taking pictures. I saw uh, government workers going for a lunchtime run. I saw people walking around and I sat there and I pulled my apple out of my backpack. I got my water bottle out. I, I ate a little bit. I drank some water and I realized I'm perfectly safe. Wow. There's, there's no danger here. It was all in my head. Yeah. And from that moment on, it really changed my life because I decided that living in such a small, scared space is absolutely no fun at all. Yeah. And it's a whole lot more fun to go through the temporary experience of fear, to go to places that are uncomfortable or unfamiliar, and to expand your world and your life. And I've made a consistent habit from that day forward to find the things that scared me and to do them. So initially that was raising my hand in class. I didn't always have something to say, but I would raise my hand anyway, just because I was scared of doing it. Yeah. Or, you know, going to new places. And over time, what I know now 
is that I know fear. I lived in it. I grew up in it. And I know the other side of fear. And I know that it's all okay. And I know how to pull people forward into a life that is the right fit for them by going through the fear. That's pretty incredible. And that revelation is a a polar opposite from what you were living before. As you started having these little breakthrough moments where you're like, oh, I'm safe, or whatever the next step was, how did that start changing your perspective on what was possible and what you could achieve? I don't know that it, it really, in the early stages, had that much impact on my sense of possibility. I just kind of took it as a good habit. Okay. I thought, right. you know, fears are often liars, and I'm going to check every single fear. I'm not, I'm still not a huge risk taker. Like I don't put myself at physical risk, but if there's something where I'm like, I wonder what will happen. This feels scary. And I think I'll probably be okay. I will definitely go towards it. So that habit over time, it definitely expanded my comfort level and, you know, to where I am now, my sense of possibility is tremendous. (laughs) I think a little (laughs) bit unusual. Yeah. Um, But it it didn't start that way. It just started as a good habit that I found every time I went through the fear that life got better and bigger and more interesting. And it it was kind of like before I felt like if you can imagine like big like wings that you might have, like almost as a costume, they were all crumpled up in this really small space. And then over time, as I made the space bigger and bigger, it's like the wings could expand, and it, now it feels comfortable. It's like the the right size for me. It almost sounds like you shifted a little bit from like fear, that's the common thread of what you're saying here, into a place of curiosity, into a place of wonder, into a place of letting, I guess, moving from the fear and moving into the curiosity being the driving factor. Yeah, and I, I think it's even gone to a bit of a further place where I still feel – fear now. And I recognize life is not guaranteed. Dangerous things can happen. But I feel a real sense of peace and safety and uh, calm outside of myself, independent of my individual experience or one scary moment. It's kind of there's a a groundedness and a steadiness that lets me just kind of bat away things that used to maybe feel really scary. And, and that fear and that scariness, the, it really sounds like like you mentioned peace there. You mentioned scariness. And it sounds like by living in a place that appears safe, you're actually causing turmoil internally instead of living to the possibilities and, and putting fear to the side. It's a great point. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think it is scarier to be scared. <laughs> <laughs> it is less scary to live your life really like if you're living in a mental place of fear that that is just scary but if you're living your life and accepting yeah there are good days and bad days and you know people have accidents and whatever something bad may happen but just trusting okay and that that's all okay it's more fun to live life and experience the ups and downs and learn from things and have problems and get stronger from them, that's a lot more fun and less uh, mentally draining than being scared of all of that stuff or being worried that something bad is going to happen. Yeah, bad things are going to happen and we recover. That's that's what humans do. When you went to the University of Maryland, what what was it that you were going there to study? And, And did that, was that in the field that you ended up going into? What was that like? Yeah, so I I did go to University of Maryland, and I went pretty much following my parents' direction. They, uh, my mom in particular, had made a career change in life. She had gone from being a teacher to being an accountant, and okay. it was a totally wonderful change for her. She loved it, and I think my parents thought, well, you don't need to figure out your career. We've already figured this out you should just be an accountant. So I went to school for an accounting degree. I'm not a detail oriented person. I don't like arbitrary rules. (laughs) um, It was a really bad fit for me personally. I could do it fine. And I, I did get the degree. I worked as an accountant for a little bit, 
but I was really checked out and unconnected to that degree. It, it really didn't have anything to do with me personally. So how do you end up going from accountant student to helping people find the right careers and the right roles for them in their life? Well, I might have let on a dirty little secret with uh, my, the story that I shared because okay. it's really a story about careers as well okay. because careers play such an important role in terms of our feelings of safety and security and social status. And there's actually a whole lot of fear wrapped up in picking something that feels like me, doing something that feels fulfilling Um, so the themes that I experienced are really a lot of what I see in our clientele as well. Many people are drifting on, have drifted onto a certain career path that was working okay. And then they've hit a dead end and it's scary to try to figure out, well, what do I do from here? What's next? So the way I got to where I am today was basically my habit of okay. <laughs> doing scary things. So I I was scared to go towards a helping profession. In my family, there was a story that anybody who works as a helping professional just needs help themselves. They're all quacks. Okay. So it was really scary for me to move in that direction. But I started volunteering at a crisis hotline. This is a condensed version. It actually took me like three years of wandering, wandering through the forest, like not knowing what I was doing. <laughs> okay. But um, I started volunteering and then it was scary to leave a job and start a business. And I jumped totally naively, had no clue what I was doing, probably didn't have any business uh, starting a business, um, but I did that. And then from there, it's just been... One, I really care about people. I love helping them. I love lifting them up and helping them to have a more expansive, fulfilling life. And uh, two, over time, my team and I have developed a really effective system that takes what can feel really scary or unfamiliar to people about figuring out what they want to do next and makes it a process that people can follow get results with and step into the next phase of their life without it feeling so scary. I think so many people can relate to your story. They can relate to that fear of, of the unknown, the fear of venturing out to something bigger than what they imagine. And often they take careers because it's the safe choice. Uh, you know, some people might do what you did and go into Uh, or go towards a field because their parent uh, drives them that way. Others do it because they think it's a good job. How can a career affect more than just work? And, And is that good or bad? Well, in my experience, careers really impact three big areas of our lives. They impact our level of fulfillment. They impact our financial health. And they also impact our personal time and well-being. So if you think about somebody who is in a situation that's a bad fit for them, it's not just that they go to work and it's a bad fit. It's There's a lot of like bleed over. They come home, they're cranky. Yeah. Their health starts to suffer because they're just checking out and coming home and ordering out or whatever. Um, so their self-confidence can suffer if they're not in a a good fit for them. So there's a lot of repercussions to being in an ill-fitting job or career path. And on the flip side, there's a lot of positive impacts when there is that good alignment for people where they're playing to their strengths, they're doing something that feels meaningful to them. And I'll note that that can be different for different people. For some people, it's super meaningful to be able to earn a good living and take care of their kids. For some people, it's super meaningful to work on a particular cause. But really what I found in my work is there's not one universal right answer or perfect prescription, like everybody should go do X. Um, I think a, a really common one is everybody should follow their passion. And I'm actually 
that's fine, but I don't know that is for everybody or the flip side. Everybody should go get a secure job. I don't think that either. I think it's really having a neutral space to listen and hear yourself and what you're wanting and then to have a process to take that internal desire and match it up to a real world possibility. That's really good. You mentioned fulfillment, and I think that's such a, a significant word. How can we start living a life where we see work as something that can bring purpose or significance or fulfillment? And in that process, you know, I agree that it has to be personal to you and you have to define that yourself. But how can we take stock and really evaluate that for ourselves and define that, what that purpose and significance and fulfillment looks like, and then apply it to a career? Definitely. Um, I could probably talk your ear off, so I'm going to try to <laughs> <laughs> to give you what, what you're asking, but feel free if I get off track to rein me in. Um, so I think that one of the biggest kind of myths around careers is that there's something that we should just know, okay. like magically inside of us. Yeah. And also that there's something that we should be able to identify and figure out on our own. Okay. In my experience, the, um, the truth of how people get onto a career path that is a good fit for them is likely, like if you're, if you're looking around and you're saying, oh my gosh, my friends or my family member or somebody, they just seem to have it all figured out. How did they do that? Yeah. Well, if I could kind of take you behind the scenes and they never seem to struggle and, and I'm struggling with this, um, behind the scenes, what probably happened is they had some type of interest, they explored it in the real world, and they had social support around that direction. So there was a professor, there was a, a parent figure, there was a mentor, somebody who sat back and said, hey, you know what, you'd be really good at this, or did you think about this? Or I see you're interested in whatever um, activity, let me sign you up for a camp or help you to explore that area. So the, the person who just seems to have their career all figured out, they won't tell you that. <laughs> they won't say, you know, oh, I had an interest, a, a, a seed that was developed and supported over time. They'll say, oh, I just, oh, I always knew. And you'll think, gosh, there must be something wrong with me right. that I, I have not had that epiphany moment where everything just fell into place. But I think that everybody who has gotten it figured out has those two factors in place. They have done some exploration, they've had with on an interest, and they've had support. Now, unfortunately, not everybody, you know, in their growing up years has those elements nurtured in them. So what that means is, when you become an adult and you find yourself hating Monday mornings, or like living for the weekend, or you know, on the road to burnout or in a dead end job, whatever it may be, it's not that there's something wrong with you. All that it is, is you need to have the right environment and behaviors. And as an adult, you can reach out and find somebody who can help you to see yourself because we're so close to ourselves and who we are and our strengths that in a way it's really hard to know ourselves, but having that external support, I think, is a really key factor to getting perspective on who you are and what you're wanting. And I think too often people try to figure this out on their own and they get discouraged, they get stalled out, they get stuck. I've talked to people who have been in a holding pattern for years, decades, yeah. uh, just because they didn't know how to figure out what they wanted to do and they were trying to do it by themselves and just getting lost in the process. So. Um, let me pause there. I probably threw, threw far too much at you. Um, but I guess uh, in summary, it's it's really, it's not a person in isolation. It's a person in the context of a supportive environment is what leads people to finding fulfillment. Well, and, and we say often on here, whether it's talking to a guest or some of our standalone episodes where, where isolation is the death march for people small businesses, it's the death march for entrepreneurs. That isolation is a dangerous place. 
And time and time again, when we talk to these experts, people that are doing uh, their big ideas and their dreams, we hear the same story that uh, one of the foundations is finding the right coach, the right mentor, the right guide on their journey that they can process the hard stuff with. How can somebody really start making the right choices to find the right mentor, the right coach, the right person to do that journey with? Well, I have a a flippant answer, which is I definitely recommend our services in terms of if you you are (laughs) feeling stuck in a career, this is our specialty. This is what we do all day, every day. Um, I think it's really important, though, to find somebody that you resonate with, that You have a good rapport, a good vibe, somebody who respects you as a person. I think that's really important. Um, I'd also look for social proof in terms of has this person helped other people? I think that, and I'm not sure if, if you've ever noticed or seen this, but I think particularly in the business world, there's a real strong lead with a personal story of I did this or grew this thing but I don't know that that always translates to, and I can help you to do it, though there's that implication. So I'd really look for, hey, has this person actually um, been able to help others? Can you tell us a little bit about how you've been able to help others and maybe some of the stories, the victories of individuals who have gone on this journey uh, with you and gotten to the other side? Definitely. Well, we have the most amazing clients. We work with smart, capable, good-hearted professionals. They are just world-class and a pleasure to work with every single day. And what we do is we take people from that place of feeling confused or stuck or lost or at a crossroads and just not really knowing where to go which is tricky because when you take a smart person and they don't have a direction, it doesn't matter how smart they are. They can't get there. Right. So we yeah. take them from that place where they're just kind of um, immobilized. We take yeah. them through a process so that they can come out the other side feeling a lot more confident in who they are, what is amazing about them. They can also be clear about what the next best step for them is. And as I mentioned, we we don't offer a one-size-fits-all solution. We really help the client to understand who they are, what they're wanting, so that they can find the best path, the best path forward. Excuse me, and really to have momentum so that they are no longer stuck, but actually moving forward and making progress. Some of the the stories that I love in terms of our clients are people who are able to with the right support and the right environment, they're really able to connect to who they are and what they're wanting. And again, with support and encouragement, they're able to go for it. We've had clients who have been able to make a transition to a new job and have stayed there happily for years. We've had clients who have started something on the side, they're nearing retirement, and they just want to know, okay, when and if my job goes away, I still want to have some kind of income. We've had clients who have landed jobs, and they say, I'm much more pleasant to be around for my family. You know, when I come home from work, I'm no longer uh, so grumpy. I'm really more engaged. And we've also had people who have stayed in their same organization, but they've been able to approach it in a different way. So there's really a wide gamut of outcomes that our clients have, but I would say like in terms of the nuts and bolts of what it looks like, but I would say overall, our goal is really to lift people up, to help them to get more of what they're wanting. And I don't think there's a right or a wrong for what you're wanting. Um, Sometimes People want more fulfillment. Sometimes they want more time. Sometimes they want more money. Whatever the client wants, we're going to really help them to get more of that in the real world than they were previously. That sounds like you're often going on a a journey of discovery with your clients, that you're helping them on getting unstuck and use the word momentum, which I think is a great word. Once we get that momentum behind us, and we're moving forward. It just seems like possibilities uh, that were unseen, possibilities that 
uh, were unimagined uh, could and do just start opening for people where they are able to step in uh, from the fog into a, a place of clarity. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think people learn their way through career decisions. So it really is the idea of once you take one step, even if it's the wrong step, but right. once you get moving, you're going to see farther. So it's really um, getting that momentum is a huge deal for our clients. And you have a process called the Clarity Process. Can you tell us about that process and what it looks like? Mm -hmm. Definitely. So the Clarity Process is something that we have honed over many, many clients, uh, many, many years. And what I love about it is there is a structure that we take all of our clients through. But with my particular service, all of our coaching is done one on one. And so there's also a real freedom to meet the client exactly where they are and help them with whatever place they're getting stuck on, which, um, again, <laughs> is kind <laughs> of the, the, the whole thing. You know, it's the fears and why you're getting stuck. That's the hardest part for people. So um, we have room to approach and support people in those ways. The clarity process is really helping people to connect to what is amazing about them. I think all too often when you're in the wrong career path, you're just not feeling great. And it's natural, it's human, but it feels very personal to the individual. So it's really important to help people to connect to what is awesome about them, to listen to that from an external perspective. So often I hear people say, oh, you know, my husband or my wife, they told me I was good at those things, but I didn't really believe them. Like I thought, <laughs> you know, they were just saying that. So yeah. really having somebody who talks to a lot of different people and can say, whoa there, you just told me something that is super phenomenal and not everybody does that or thinks in that way. So really listening and taking in what is, um, awesome about you as an individual is very powerful. From there, um, what we want to do is amplify people's understanding of what's getting in their way. So okay. we, um, it's really not just a linear process, <laughs> even though there is a process. <laughs> yeah. Humans, humans are tricky. They just are tricky. So we need to help them to understand and move through, okay, here's a blind spot and let's show it to you. Here's a way where you're blocking possibilities. Let's open those up. From there, we can research what types of jobs are going to be a good fit for who you are and what you're wanting or what type of career path. It doesn't have to be a job. And really to um, identify what is going to be that best fit through our process. From there, we help people to translate all of the, the thought and the preparation into a real world action plan. So they can actually say, okay, this is where I'm going. And what I'll note is even if a client hasn't totally gotten to their end destination, right? It is still such an incredible relief to know, oh, but this is where I'm headed and I'm on my way. <laughs> yeah. That's like, incredibly powerful for, for people. So that's that. And then uh, the last part is the why saying yes to waking up to a life that actually feels like your own. You are taking this process and giving people an outlet to make this easy to access through your one, three and six month programs. Tell us about those programs and uh, how they're different and what somebody may get out of it if they go through those uh, programs. Yeah, definitely. And and thank you. I'm more than happy to, to talk all about them. But at just a high level, we do have one, three and six month programs. And most of our clients hang out in the one or the three month. The one month is our just get me pointed in the right direction program. And that's really for people who they need a sounding board, they need to talk things through, but they feel like once they got that clarity, they could move forward without too much resistance. Okay. The three month career direction, clarity and action plan program, it goes through the same clarity process, but it just has some more time to work through the gunk. 
So oftentimes we need to do a little bit of clearing before we can even go through the process. And we also can hold the client's hand a little bit longer with implementation to really get them that momentum. It's important to me that our clients get moving. That's what I want to see. <laughs> and then our six month program, the Phoenix Rising program is our three month program plus a whole lot of just intensive life design and paying attention and setting things up in a way that feels good. Sometimes when I describe our programs, people who have been feeling stuck for so long kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, they kind of question, could I really like figure this unsolvable problem that I've been struggling with for so long? Could I really figure it out in a month or three months? And to that, I would say, yes, it is very doable, particularly when you're working with somebody who knows the process and knows what you need to do to get this resolved. It's sort of like if you looked at your car and you were totally baffled by what to do to fix it, but then right. you take it to the mechanic and they can do it in 30 minutes. When you have the right support around you, it is a very doable process. It's pretty painless. It actually doesn't take that much time. It just needs to have a certain sequence of steps happen to get you out the other side uh, so that you can get on your way with your career. You've also written a book about this topic called Career Grease, How to Get Unstuck and Pivot Your Career. Tell us a little bit about the book, who it's written for, and what they'll get out of it. Definitely. So my book is really written for our clients and for people who are struggling with this issue of what do I do next? And you're really not sure how to answer that question. A lot of times people do research, they think a lot, they um, do quizzes and printouts and you know, trying to figure out what to do next. There are some common pitfalls that people fall into. They might go back to school just because they don't know what else to do. They might think taking time off or starting a business is just the default thing that they should do. This book really walks people through the process that we take our clients through and helps to dispel some ideas that are going to cause folks trouble. It has stories of clients so that people can kind of see how to move through the process and exercises that as well. So it's really meant to be, if you want to get your head around how to think about this, the book would be really helpful for you. I think so often one of the best things we can do is step back and, and I love stories. I know a lot of people love hearing stories. You've worked with somewhere around 200 professionals helping them find the right fit. Can you tell me maybe one or two stories that, that every time you think about that person or think about their situation, it just... Uh, makes you excited uh, to relive that story of how their life was changed? It's a good question. Um, and I really feel incredibly blessed and honored to get to step into our clients' lives and be that guide and support for them. So I would say that there is a huge transformation that can occur within our programs where people get to be more authentic, they get to feel more on track, they get to feel more confident. And it's not necessarily a cut and dry. Once you're through the process, your life is just done. You can <laughs> set your career on autopilot. Right. <laughs> Never have any worries again. <laughs> Though that would be amazing um, if it was. So I think for me, I've really tried and am trying to do a better job of keeping in, in contact with our clients. There is, There are certainly snapshots and improvements and powerful insights that our clients have gotten. But I think for me at this point, I'm really starting to ask, how can we continue to be of service? And what is like the next aha or improvement that we can support people in making in their lives so that they can wake up feeling great, appreciate this wonderful gift of life, and really feel like they're living their life. There are going to be some people listening, and they're really resonating with what you're talking about. Maybe they're in a career that they feel stuck. Maybe they have something inside of them that they just they're, they, they're uncertain about where they're at. But how can they start to find you, find this book, find uh, some of the materials you have, and connect with you further? Certainly. 
Um, so what people can do is go to cardicareercoaching.com. That's cardi, C-A-R-D-Y, careercoaching.com. And what I would recommend would be to look over the site. We have a lot of detailed client stories on the site, so you can kind of see what we do, who we work with. I'd recommend checking those out. And then the next step would be to apply to work with us. We are somewhat selective in who we work with. We know over from the, the course of working with so many people exactly who is going to get the most out of our program and get a great result. So I recommend putting in an application. We'll get back to you with next steps. And it's really pretty easy to get going. Let's dive into some rapid fire questions as we move towards the end of today's episode. Sure. The first question is, what is one tip you would give someone with a big idea or dream and they don't know where to start? Yes, I know you said rapid fire, but it's a good question. <laughs> so, um, so if you have a big idea or dream but don't know where to start, I would say find the first step that you can take in the real world and try to move closer to people who have done what you are trying to do. What is one change you would like to see in the world? I would love to see more people waking up and seeing work as a great part of their life. What do you want your legacy to be? I think just helping people to grow and expand and enjoy their life. Who or what inspires you? I am really inspired by reality. That might sound weird, but I'm really okay. inspired by um, the beauty of the natural world and the, the forces and the principles that just work really well. I think that lining up with those as best as possible is very inspiring. What are you currently reading or watching? I recently read... Strengthen Your Business by Robert Thomas Bethel. Okay. We have some plans for expansion in the new year, and uh, I found it really helpful to think about how to go about growing a business. What is one dream you're still wanting to fulfill in your own life? I have been sitting on this idea of coaching a youth sports team. So that's okay. probably the, uh, the one thing that business was taking precedence this year. But yeah. once I carve out some time, I'm a little nervous, but I'm gonna, gonna give that a go. Allison, it's been a lot of fun chatting with you today uh, and talking about such an important topic. Thanks for taking time out and sharing your story and some great insights to our audience. Thank you, Michael. It was such a pleasure to connect. I really appreciated the time with you. Once again, I would like to thank today's guest, Allison Carty, for taking time out to share her story. In the episode notes, you'll find all of her links, including her website and social channels. On Wednesday, we're super excited. It's episode 100, and our guest is Lee Carraher. She's a CEO, author, speaker, and an expert on creating thriving businesses. She's written two books. The first, The Boomerang Principle, inspiring lifetime loyalty from your employees, and the second, Millennials and Management, the essential guide to making it work at work. Lee is the founder and CEO of Double Forte. It is a 15-year-old digital media and PR firm. Make sure to come back this Wednesday for episode 100 with our guest, Lee Carraher. For you, the listener of the Jumble Think Podcast, FreshBooks is offering a 30-day free trial to give you the opportunity to try out their services. FreshBooks is the easy-to-use invoicing software designed to help freelancers, small business owners, and entrepreneurs to get organized, save time, invoicing, and get paid faster. FreshBooks is built to support the needs of growing businesses, just like yours. On average, customers double their revenue in 24 months. FreshBooks can also help you spend less time on the boring tasks like paperwork, invoicing, and reconciling your expenses and freeing you up so you can spend your time on the parts of the business you love. To learn more about FreshBooks or to start your free 30-day trial, just go to www.gofreshbooks.com slash jumblethink. That's www.gofreshbooks.com slash jumblethink. Hey, I want to thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Jumble Think Podcast. It's been a lot of fun, and I want to encourage you. I want to leave you with this one last thought. If you have a big idea and dream, 
Today is the best time to start chasing that dream. Take one step, a simple step, a small step, but move forward because when you start moving, you get the ball rolling, you get that momentum going, and eventually that big idea and dream will come to pass. Thanks again for tuning in, and until Wednesday, have a great week. Les mères de famille, les enfants, peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant dans quelques mois. Lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps, vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.